Hey everybody, we've got a brand new floor plan, a first look sneak peek here today, a model that was built based on your feedback, and the best part of it might be what it doesn't have. Stick around and see what your comments and your feedback have created because uh, I think you're gonna like this. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bicious RV down at Ember RV today where I was granted the very first look at their newest model, one that was built based on your feedback, the 190 MSL. The Missile! This is the very first no-slide, uh, multi-function convertible storage Murphy bed, bunkhouse, cargo locker, walk-in closet, e-bike storage, I mean, Whatever you wanna do, this one can do. You wanna load a kayak up the belly of this beast? You can do that. You wanna load, like I said, a bunch of e-bikes in here, you can do that. Are you solo camping and looking for something you could use as a mobile office? You can do that. Uh, do you have uh, a, a family? You wanna do some family camping? You can do that. Um, th th really, there's not a whole lot that you can't do with this one. Now, these are a very different breed of critter. It is a full uh, aluminum and composite body construction. Uh, the only wood that you might find in the body construction is just where uh, they might stuff the aluminum tubes with uh, a little bit of wood just to give some screws to bite something into. But even the floor is completely composite. Like the floor literally can't rot. The walls can't rot. The roof can't rot. And I'm not saying you shouldn't take care of it, but you're gonna have to really go out of your way to screw this one up right here. We have a true queen bed up front, which is another rare find in smaller single axle campers. These are also very uncommon in the world of small campers in that they are zero to 100 degree proven. Uh, a lot of people like to ask, are they four seasons? There's no real definition of that, but the fact is Ember has actually done the testing uh, for hot, cold climate use. Uh, you have Goodyear Wrangler off-road tires with factory TPMS. Um, the independent Kurt trailing arm suspension that has suddenly started to be adopted by a bunch of other brands. We're also looking at one today with nearly every option available, including their new Max Solar Package outfitted with all Smexy Pants Victron components. And we are going to get to see this thing inside out, side upside down today. And I would really love to hear from you. What do you like? What would you change? And it's got a couple little hitches and it's giddy up. I'm not, I've never said that any RV is perfect, but as far as the single axle Overland models go, I think this might be their best one yet, and I am eager to hear what you have to say. And in case you're curious and you'd like to learn a little bit more about how these are put together, I actually have a full walkthrough video tour of this facility right here. And what's kind of cool is we can just sort of phase on in like a ghost into this RV thanks to that stargazer skylight that they have up top there. Instead of a windshield on the front that would be covered by the Murphy bed, they went a little bit different route and they gave you that little uh, skylight up top. Now what's kind of cool here is all the windows in this are that uh, Euro style Lexan and they are dual pane. Uh, what that all means basically is that these things as you can see can open for crazy good airflow and they are intensely noise canceling. They're a little bit better in terms of insulation quality versus a, a standard window, but um, I, I, I really don't even like getting into insulation talks and R values and RVs because it is such a, uh, frankly, it's just where all the liars live in this business today. And I, I just don't wanna take any part in it, you know? Uh, anyway, up top here, uh, starting with the 23 season, which this is a, I think a 23 model, um, they, they changed over to the uh, Truma Aventa air conditioner right here. Um, this thing is a far lower power draw than the Dometic they were using. It has, you know, high output, low output, then eco mode um, with a, uh, like a, a dehumidifier uh, specific function that really provides an, an, a pretty incredible cooling effect without eating up nearly as much juice as a lot of other things. Winnebago uses that in their FLX package, by the way, their flex editions. Now, this is, um, in terms of the layout, a uh, basically almost a match uh, for, with the 190 MDB, yeah, you know me, with a d -d 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 double Dynofa here and a nice campsite overlook window. Once again, though, that is that uh, dual pane Euro style window where there's an interesting thing you could do here. If I suppose you were so inclined, you could literally like if somebody outside, like dad's like, all right, get me another cold one, load me up kids. The kids can 
uh, just kind of lean forward from the couch, open the refrigerator straight across from him, grab dad as cold Kerr's light, and just hand it out the window without ever having to get up. Um, now, obviously, the door is right there. It's not like you'd have to go far. It's just a thing that you, you kind of, I guess, could do. All the uh, cabinetry in here, by the way, is all pocket-screwed lumber core, and they put a very good lighting package in this. And as I'll demonstrate in a few minutes, actually, uh, all of our main cabin lights, and you'll see later, even our uh, awning lights are on a, uh, a, a dimmer switch. Now, some of these Ember Overland models have the, the TV like dead flat to the right, like on that right-hand wall over there, and not everybody really has a good shot at the television. This one does not suffer from that issue. It's it's reason number 37, I think it's one of their, their best, and the sofa was lower than I thought, which is why the camera really lurched around. Now, the TV mounts and secures itself flat against the wall, but we're going to get to see in a few minutes how that TV can pivot around if you want to make it face over toward the... Uh, the simulated cinema seat sofa with the fold down armrest there or um, the uh, the jackknife bifold where I'm at right now, you can do that too. Now today's model we're looking at is outfitted with their Max Solar Package. The trick is all of that stuff other than the solar panels is basically buried and hidden under the sofa. One thing you can see here though is that Victron uh, multi-control system that they have going on right here. You can see right from here with these indicator lights is it gaining juice? Is it dispersing? Um, it, are the batteries full? And is it float charging the batteries, meaning it's not overcharging, flooding, nuking the batteries? Um, it, there's so much you can do with this. It is very, very cool. Uh, down below here, you might notice that little black circle. That is actually one of your furnace vents. This RV uh, has their Truma Combi system, which is a combination water heater and furnace. It is a highly efficient little thing that you find used on a lot of these, uh, you know, smaller kind of overlander style RVs here. We're going to come back at all the kitchen stuff all opened up in a little bit right here. One of the interesting things, sometimes people like a window behind the stove. Some people don't. Some people dislike a window behind the stove that opens for airflow because it has a screen that gets all greasy. With this having those Lexan windows, you don't exactly have that same thing. So you might be wondering though, like, how do I keep the bugs out? Well, you can use the day shade as a little bit of a bug screen, but keep in mind, and I will always try to be super fair with you here. If a bug goes through the window and gets caught behind the screen, then you close the window on the outside. Once you, you know, flip that screen shut, like I just did right there, well, the bug's going to be inside, so you got to kind of keep that in mind. Now, at a glance, you don't really see a lot of kitchen um, outlet stuff. These Overlander models kind of lean on the fact that a lot of people probably are going to spend more time doing prep-type stuff outside. So they, they don't have a huge amount of interior kitchen prep space. You got the little uh, two-burner cooktop, which, by the way... We are being joined today by special guest, Steve the Stovetop. Like, you see that, right? There is a face staring uh, at us right there. Anyway, um, they do have a nice set of outlets over here, though, which kind of, I think if you're going to have any outlets in the kitchen, that's probably one of the best spots for it. Something that might miff some people, they don't do a gas electric two-way fridge. They only do the 12 volt DC compressor fridge. They are using one that uh, is uh, pretty well respected for not being a total battery hog, but some people dislike that. They just don't offer a factory two-way uh, kind of option or swaption there. Now, up top over here, a couple things. This is where your controller is located for the Truma Combi furnace and or water heater. All those functions controlled right here. You got your Obi-Wan Kenobi motion sensitive digital control panel, but it does just have normal, simple, easy switches. Um, one of the, uh, the, the nice things about this is like Alakazam, lights go off, man. And the camera is actually making those look brighter than it is because that's what this camera does. Uh, and I wanted to wait a little bit there. I didn't want to like do a lot of light flashing and bother people. I will tell you what I'm about to do. The camera usually doesn't like, and it tends to flicker really weird, even though it doesn't do that in real life. So if you're light sensitive, look away for a second. One, two, three, go. All of your interior lights can dim. Now you see how the camera went kind of bananas there for a minute. That's just sort of what these, this camera that I use does anyway. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> in the words of Dennis Hopper in speed, pop quiz, hot shot. What's that? I, I, I wasn't going to quiz you about the bomb on the bus, uh, so uh, never mind that. Now, again, one of the things this does, uh, I think, fairly well, better than you would think, 
is some decent campsite window coverage for no bigger than the living room is. And you might notice that remote control over there by that nice wide entry door. Good for wide body individuals like me who are still putting on pandemic pounds. Um, I've been doing that since before the pandemic started. Gosh, I got to get myself healthy again. Anyway, that is the remote control and thermostat for the air conditioner. So it will attempt to cool the RV uh, to, to wherever you happen to be sitting with that remote. So, you know, don't lose the remote. <laughs> Um, as I mentioned, this is a double sofa model. Uh, they, I don't believe they offer uh, a, a dinette on this. Now, notice, I just kind of keyed into the fact, they are not using the peekaboo I smell you bathroom door with the big giant uh, fall into the gap. Remember those jeans commercials? Everybody was falling into the gap, apparently. Well, they don't do that here. Uh, so, so there you go. Now, this is... The, uh, the multi-function storage locker MSL, the missile. And this is the new missile 2.0, uh, where you've got the, the teddy bear pads over here, but now you've got the new little companion to turn this from a single over single into a double over double bed. And this is the new standard MSL configuration in case you hadn't seen any of my update videos previously. The little companion piece, by the way, I like to call Teddy Ruxpin. Um, which takes me back to my childhood when I found out I could play my brother's uh, Guns N' Roses tape in my Teddy Ruxpin. And that little bear welcomed me to the jungle and put me on my shin -na 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 knees knees Anyway, down there you'll see some power outlet. Well, I don't know if you can see them because they're next to that motion-sensitive light, which you can just turn on or off. Notice the little cargo tie-downs, too, because you're going to get to see this in wide-open cargo mode. Um, the uh, All of the outlets in this are tied to the inverter. 1,000 watt base inverter, max solar like we're looking at today, 3,000 watt inverter that can run the microwave, air conditioner, everything, albeit for a limited time. Um, I've yet to really see a manufacturer create an indefinite, you can use everything all you want kind of uh, solar package because frankly, I don't, I, I, I don't know that something like that is really uh, financially reasonably capable to be adopted into the mainstream market. Um, and an RV this size, I don't know if there's physically enough room to attach that much solar to it. Now, I, I kind of talked about those day-night shades, but looking up top here, you see that you can, uh, you know, you can go full day, full night, you can split it in between, and I wanted to give you that, that patented RV nerd Burt Reynolds Murphy bed demo where I do the Mr. Rogers kick my shoes off and show you how a little over six foot tall myself, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. My wife and I could fit on that. And we'd have just enough room that she wouldn't be elbowing me in the night uh, because I tend to be a cuddler and she tends to not be a cuddler and she likes her space so she can sleep at night because I tend to be a little bit smothery. But anyway, showing you how that all works. It is a bendy bed, but you don't have to use it as a Murphy bed. If you just want to use it as a 60 by 80 true queen, you could replace any true queen mattress in this as long as you understand you no longer have a Murphy function. But that's the cool thing. This is I think hands down the single most flexible uh, RV I may have ever, ever seen. Now, uh, the, the, the sofas obviously both fold down and you may have noticed how you do also have the um, uh, storage under the door side sofa. And this is a double Dynofa with two removable tables that kind of bracket onto the front of this thing. But of course, the signature calling card of this thing is the missile bunk system over there, that double over double bed system. Uh, well, now double over double. The original missiles, like I said, were single over single. You can convert it and f roll it over, flip it and reverse it, uh, Missy Elliott style, any way that you please, basically. And, uh, you know, it, it, it the, the two half sections lock together so, like, they don't fall apart going down the road. Like, it's a shockingly solid system. Here's another cool thing. Crazy high bunk ratings. Those bunks are rated for 300 pounds per sleeping space. Each bunk is a double bunk. That means that each bed is rated for 600 pounds. What I think is cool about that is uh, you can use this as more than just a, a, a kid sleeper, potentially. This could be an amazing like buddy hunting cabin kind of winter sort of thing where, uh, you know, Three or four people have their own individual separate sleeping spaces before you got to uh, double up, uh, uh, anywhere. Uh, I, I, 
I love this system. I love this system. I love this camper. I love everything about how they are accomplishing all of this stuff. Now, moving over here into the bathroom, brilliant little detail. A locking bathroom door because sometimes we need some privacy and sometimes we just need to hide and play on our phone for a minute. I think some of you know what I mean. M Melissa Rendezzo, uh, if you're watching this, I know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, and I will be fair. I've talked about a lot of really cool things. I think the single most underwhelming thing to me in this RV, like some people are gonna say, no oven in the kitchen, that's a problem. Okay, I respect that. Um, I, I'm gonna probably cook most of my stuff outside in a camper like this, but that faucet hardware and just the plain camper plastic sink in the bathroom, those are probably my, my two single most underwhelming things in this RV. But there's nothing wrong with them by any stretch. It just feels like they could be a little more right. Got a nice big breeze and viewing window there in case you want to put on a free show uh, or, you know, share the love with the neighbors um, after a uh, hearty, hearty breakfast. Anyway, uh, take a look at the left side of the screen. You can see the storage that is in that big corner medicine cabinet right there and a little bit under the sink. And then if you take a look at the right side of the screen, you can see how this is a fairly fluffy, friendly toilet space right there. Although I didn't appreciate being overlooked by the Octopus Fight Club who really just wanted to start some trouble. All I'm gonna say to that Octopus, don't start none, won't be none. So neither here nor there. Now you, uh, the, you're going to see in a little bit here, there's these little amber uh, evening lights, get it? Amber lights for the Ember RVs. <laughs> but there's one directly above my head right now, uh, like if, if you were behind the camera. And um, they're all kind of interconnected, uh, like the Beastie Boys are intergalactic planetary. But the fact is they can give you an awesome little nighttime navigation sort of light system there. Now, the people are going to ask, how tall is the RV? And the thing is, it's variable. Um, like if you, where's a good spot I can show you? Uh, okay, look, I'm, I'm trying to go really slow not to make you motion sick. Here's a nice small space. If you look above the microwave, it looks like the microwave is crooked because it's uh, there, there's less wood visible on the left side than the right side because the entire ceiling vaults upward so that you have rain runoff because it's not a an exterior vaulted ceiling. It is a flat roof construction, but it is built on a pitch. So you do have water runoff. In the very back of the RV, at its very shortest point, it's six and a half foot tall. The rest of the RV gets probably about six inches taller. What that does mean is that my head absolutely has to be in the bubble of the shower, but it's not so much that it bothers me uh, whatsoever. Uh, I, I think it works uh, absolutely fine here. Now, one of the things on this, again, uh, I, I think the best part is really the, uh, the, the, the double over double bunk system. But the fact is, this allows for some awesome road mode function. Because this thing has a Burger King bunk system. You can build it your way, basically. And uh, a good example of that is what I'm doing right here. That is a kayak loaded right up the backside of that thing. And if you look real close, you can see the rear cargo door is closed. I'm not trying to cheat anything. And frankly, if you really look, you can fit a two-seater kayak right up the backside of this thing, which is what my wife threatened to do to me the last time. Well, ne never, never mind. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, my, my point here is this is really only limited by its cargo capacity, certainly, physically, but like your, your imagination. And the other thing, like I said when this video began, sometimes the best part of an RV is what is not here. And that is no slide. Having no slide allows for less weight, allows for more cargo capacity, requires less maintenance, less upkeep, less seals, less worry, more simplicity, more ease, more camping. This thing's always in road mode until you decide to, to jimmy around the bunks however you want. It is awesome like that. Now, kicking things off on the outside with some towing talk, what's it going to take to move this one around? Well, the GVW of this uh, is about 5,800 pounds, uh, just slightly over that. Something else to consider is these embers do tend to carry a, a, a fairly hefty hitch weight. Um, so while like you think, oh, okay, well, I got like a 6,000, 6,500 pound rated SUV. There's a, there's a very real chance that one of these might exhaust your vehicle's payload capacity um, before you exhaust your towing capacity. That's actually normally the case. Most of the time, 
um, RVs will exceed uh, a vehicle's payload before they uh, exceed your tow rating, but not enough people kind of understand that. So I'm going to keep talking about it uh, because I want to put your safety before the sale here. Now, interesting thing, these are seven and a half foot wide. They're not a, a, a full standard body, um, but again, they are an all composite body. So like your, your walls are Asdo on the inside and outside, aluminum packed with black foam. Uh, the, the roof is basically literally a wall that is twice as thick. And uh, the floor is used with a completely different composite material, very similar to like what Airstream uses, only twice as thick to give you extra strength and uh, you know a little more robust nature there. I like how they put that little wind fairing uh, over that uh, Stargazer skylight up front. Um, now, the, the thing to remember, some people said, yeah, but what if you leave that unlocked uh, you know, and you go down the road? Well, I mean, what if you you know, leave a window open and go down. What if you don't, you know, secure your doors or cabinet doors going down the road? Like there's just certain responsibilities that you have as an owner that I don't knock the camper for that. I think you just need to make that uh, a part of your, uh, what do I want to say here? Like, uh, you know, pre and post trip checklist. Now this is something, it kind of really rides the line between like overlander, glamper, park camber, uh, camper, off-road, off-grid. It can, it sort of blends all of that together. And this is a good sign of uh, how they can allow you to do that. They have what they call their Versa coupler. By default, this comes with a two and five sixteenths ball coupler. But um, you can swap that out for one of those like lock and roll kind of articulating hitches if that's your preference. Normally up front over here in the, uh, the front gearbox, which is a powder coated aluminum, by the way, uh, you would have your uh, battery hookups. But with this RV being outfitted with Max Solar today, that's just an empty cargo locker storage kind of space. And I'd be kind of curious, what would you put in there? They also have a very different kind of power front tongue jack. It is quite literally um, a single power corner stabilizer that you might find on a much larger RV. And it does a fantastic job on this smaller body right here. Remember too, that with no slide, um, the RV weighs less. It weighs just about 4,800 pounds empty uh, in its base form. Keep in mind, more options are going to add more weight to that, but you have a little over 1,200 pounds of available cargo, which still feels a little minimal to me, but like a little more acceptable than some of the other ones. We're looking at another available option right here today, the full observation camera suite. These are always prepped for this. You can get it from our service center, but obviously you can get it right here from the factory as well. Now, um, uh, down here, you've got a full, like almost fifth wheel Nautilus style docking center, which is cool. It's all enclosed. It is protected. Um, there are little feed holes, basically. You see those little rubber grommets where if you want to, you know, run a, uh, a hose down through there, you can. And they ship it with one of these bronze elbows. You might go, why not two for those two things? Because you should only be using one at a time. So, you know, you can kind of keep that in mind. Full outside uh, hot cold utility shower here. You see a cold water sprayer board on the other side. And uh, we are always prepped for side solar, which is very cool because if you, um, you know, even with the max solar patch, you, you got 600 watts of solar on top. You can expand that even further with a set of portable panels. Now I don't have the module installed, but factory tire pressure monitoring TPMS is standard on these. Um, your tank heater switch is not in my favorite location. Thankfully it does light up when it's activated but they're thermostatic. So what a lot of people will do is they will just flick it on and leave it on. And what thermostatic means is basically, if it's above 40 degrees, then those tank heaters uh, don't even bother activating. Now, as promised, I try to be fair about stuff. And one of the drawbacks on their, uh, their Murphy bed system and having the Max Solar hardware all located under the bed is it really limits the outside front pass-through uh, compartment. So kind of keep that in mind. Thankfully, I think there are a few other uh, crafty ways you can get around some cargo limitations, like uh, especially, you know, with that open front box kind of being available there. Went ahead and popped the uh, ladder, or ladder, what? N ladder, no. I popped the uh, awning in out for you so that you could take a look at that thing right there. One quick little caution. Uh, you see how the entry door, if you went smashing it, like if you tried to be dog the bounty hunter and kick a door open or something like that, you could hit that awning arm sideways. That's a good way to break an awning arm. So kind of be a little careful, uh, a little conscious of that. But I, they did a good job putting up pretty much the biggest awning on this I think they possibly could. Now, a lot of times when doors are right next to an awning arm, you can get kind of spritzed in the face. 
but the on the door itself will help shield you from some of that. I'm not going to say all that. Another thing that's actually kind of cool and kind of interesting is right here at ground level, you see how you can actually activate this cool little like navigation light. So if you want to walk in and not disturb everybody, like maybe you've been outside having a couple cold ones and the kids are inside sleeping, you can flick on just this little light to give you enough light to navigate through the RV to get to the uh, like bathroom. And uh, this right here, that is actually a dimmer switch for the awning lighting. Just like the interior lighting that we saw inside, you can dim things down out here. So like, uh, you know, if, if you're staying up late and uh, you, you don't wanna disturb the neighbors, you wanna be a, you know, uh, uh, a good camp neighbor. Although an RV like this is really kinda, you could get away from people as well. So whether your motto, I guess, is like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, or if your motto is like a good neighbor, stay over there. <laughs> Either way, this one's gonna take care of you, you know? Um, working our way uh, up front a little closer here, uh, the uh, the stable steps flip down, we can actually peek right through these. In case you're wondering where do you put your sewer stuff, thankfully they do give us that handy little stinky slinky tube so you can keep all your black stuff, uh, the bulk of it anyway, out of the way. And then down here, uh, this is almost where Ember began from the ground level with the Kurt Trailing Arm Suspension System. Uh, actually, uh, one of the founders of Ember RV who designs the Overlands right here, he was directly involved with the uh, designing of this system. You can see it is a true independent system. You know, there is not one axle that goes all the way through it. And that trailing arm suspension system uh, obviously intended to be able to soak up the, the, the brunt of the, the rough stuff if you're getting off the pavement. But when you are going down the road, it hauls and tracks better than just about anything I've seen, even on a single axle. Again, we've got Goodyear Wrangler tires right here, and we have a built-on wheel chock for extra stability because getting single axle RVs properly chocked up and stabilized, that can be uh, a bit of a trick, so you don't have to deal with that here quite as much. Now, that little coily sprayer hose thing, that can pop over to the hot, cold outside shower that we saw a minute ago or you can use it right here. You saw that orange kayak in the back. It's actually something they use to, uh, to test on their models to make sure that they can actually load a kayak. And here's one of the coolest things. Remember I told you one of the, uh, the, the founders of Ember RV and designer of this product, um, you know, helped design the suspension? Well, they actually own their own Ember Overlander. I think they have a 190 MDB. Um, uh, well, at least they do right now. That might change over time. One thing I know is like, it's awesome that you have this retractable screen wall right here, but um, when you're putting it down, you will wanna make sure you get that bunk mattress out of the way. But you also notice it does have a little magnet catch and an auto recoil. So if you do just want some awesome open airflow, you can do so without the bugs in your face, which is, I think, pretty cool. Now you might notice all the cool little kind of almost flares like wing outs that you see like the, the the trim on the upper back of the rv or near the front uh top of the rv um those are also all powder coated aluminum uh and i mentioned how it's an all composite body structure but here's another really cool thing um basically they're using like um a turnabond tape at all of their seam points uh just as as a instead of like a um uh like a uh uh petroleum-based sealant that will dry out and rot out and potentially leak over time. So they're doing just more stuff there to take care of you. Once again, looking at the full observation suite option today, which does include that handy backup ladder. Something else I think is actually kind of cool is that spare tire is also the same American-made 87 mile an hour rated Goodyear Wrangler off-road tire. Uh, a lot of brands, when you start getting Goodyear tires, once you uh, look at the spare, you start losing the Goodyears. This also has turn signal safety lighting. So if you flip on the left-hand turn signal, that tail light down there will blink, as will all the lights down the side of the RV and an extra set of lights at the top of the RV uh, coordinating with the side that you're signaling. And I think that's brilliant because it gives everybody else uh, a better understanding of what your intentions are on the road uh, and it has reverse travel lighting. That's a little white element in the uh, taillights there, although that is starting to become more common. Uh, on the back here, since it doesn't have a full bumper, it does have a two-inch receiver hitch. 
So if you wanted to bring like a, a little generator in a tray or something like that, if you wanted to uh, put some bikes on the back of this or whatever the case, you could put the bumper dumper on the back of this thing. And if you don't know what the bumper dumper is, Google it. It's a real thing. That's not a stupid nerdism that I came up. You are in for a, uh, uh, well, I mean, not even a treat. It's kind of a disappointment, but neither here nor there. <laughs> um, now, these right here, the, uh, Ember was the first brand where I saw these previewed. These are the new um, LCI uh, Quick Jacks. Notice, uh, or Lipper, actually, they don't really go by the name LCI anymore. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you see how it has that second bar that's adjustable that drops down? That adds extra strength and security to this. And you can actually tell if your RV is going to be really stable or not. Because basically, if that silver bar is past the red wedge, you're gonna feel like this thing is locked down and very secure, which is hard to do on a single axle. And here's another really cool thing on these uh, quick drop stabilizers. You know how some people will get like a, uh, a, a little ratchet attachment on a drill and put their, their stabilizers down? Did you know that you're not actually supposed to do that with scissor jacks because you could over torque it and ruin those things? Well, the quick drop stabilizers that we're just looking at, those, well, they say, yeah, no sweat. These are stronger. You can do that all day long, but it's a more expensive component. And that's the thing. Very little of this RV is intended to be the least expensive thing. Now, I've been having a long-term discussion since Ember was found with them, and I need more of your input so we can help continue to develop these kind of together. They are really talking about standardizing the missile bunk system here, but that means that some of their models that normally have camp kitchens would kind of lose out. What do you think about the idea of an optional, modular, totally removable kind of uh, camp kitchen situation? I'd really like to know what you're thinking about. But no matter what, you will still, of course, have the handy gas grill cooker hooker right down there. And you may have noticed the little bracket on the back, a little sample action for you right here of that uh, telescopic removable uh, roof ladder. I do believe that has actually become standard and not optional. And as long as we're talking about options, it is high time we really dove into the entire Max solar package. So let's take a look up at the roof while I start describing that. First of all, your base ember has a 200 watt factory solar package with 1000 watt inverter. They have now started to build all of their overlands prepped for max solar. I think with the exception of the rock and the roll because they're physically too small to do that. Well, uh, the max solar package goes triple 200 watt panel. So you have 600 watts of solar on the roof of this. Plus you still have that portable panel uh, plug that you could do uh, a, a little more with. Um, it bumps up to a 3000 watt uh, inverter system. Uh, you've got that new Aventa air conditioner standard on all of these, which pulls less juice. Uh, it comes with a, uh, a 270 watt game changer uh, battery um, by, from Dragonfly. Dragonfly basically is the parent company over Battleborn, in case you weren't uh, aware, same technology. And those do have a, a cold weather heater unit, so kind of keep that in mind. Although, if your solar panels are going to be covered up and it's going to be really cold, you're probably going to want to get this thing pulled in somewhere or pull the batteries. I get that that can be a bit of a project, but um, just letting you know so that you don't ruin thousands of dollars worth of batteries or anything like that. You can option a second of those 200 170 watt game changer batteries by the way which is pretty in intense um the uh uh system now is using all victron components previously they were using Mastervolt. uh victron one of the cool things about it is it's got a smart shunt system and basically you can just pull your phone out of your pocket and uh you can see exactly what your solar system is doing you can see if you are dispersing and discharging and basically losing total power you can uh but my favorite part about it is just that there's this one simple little readout because I don't know about you, uh, I'm not exactly an electrical engineer and some solar stuff gets a little spooky. And that's what I love about their that smart system that Victron puts together. Because like I said, you can just pull out your phone and uh, you, you can pull up that app and it will tell you, are you charging your batteries? Are you uh, draining your batteries? But my favorite part of that app is that like the bottom corner of the screen there is just this thing that just says time remaining. So depending on what you're doing with the RV, it's almost like looking at a gas tank or if you hit the, the thing on your dashboard that says like you have 200 miles until you're empty, it can tell you if you have six hours until your batteries are done. It can tell you if you have two hours until your batteries are done and it live updates. So as you turn on different lights or if you kick on that air conditioner, it'll tell you, okay, 
you got about a couple hours of running before that AC drains the battery. So you might want to, you know, make some plans accordingly. It's just simple, it's smart, it's straightforward, and it's something where you don't have to have a degree in electrical engineering to know how long you can run your stuff. Now, as always, I will leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. But at the time this video rolls out, this is a brand new model. Um, we've already got some sold. So like basically everything that is being built right now is effectively pre-sold. So it might be a little bit of time before we have one on our website with pricing displayed. Contact our team anytime and we are happy to get your figures. Uh, you don't have to give us your social security number. You probably don't even have to give us your name. We can get you uh, an estimate worked up if need be. But when you are ready, we are ready. And once again, I would love to hear what you have to say about this one. And if you appreciate how we showed you all the cool things it does as well as a couple of the things that it doesn't do so cool. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let us know that you appreciate the fair information that you're getting here today. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.